Think of it like actors with their agents, you know, the actors, their agents help them get auditions for movies and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're going to have your agencies, um, agreements, contracts, all that kind of stuff. So, hey, Laptop Freedom Babes, wonderful. Hello. 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 Today's live at five. Hello, I am Rebecca and I am the Wonderless VA. I run the Laptop Freedom Program, Laptop Freedom Moms Program. If you are looking to become a VA, these are training and mentorship programs so you can start your biz. Really fun and exciting. So before we start today, hi Erica. Before we start today's free training, which is on VA agencies and subcontractors, what does that mean? What role do they play? What does that mean for your VA business? We are going to enjoy a cocktail. So today's cocktail is inspired by the fact that tonight I'm watching Harry Potter. So I looked up Harry Potter cocktails and this is like an apple cider, ginger beer, bourbon, I think it's called butterbeer. Except this one doesn't have butterscotch in it because I couldn't really find it in the grocery store and I knew I had maple syrup, so this has got maple syrup in it. But cheers if you're having a cocktail or a glass of wine for today's free training. Welcome. It's kind of like Carly, it is yum, but it's like, <laughs> I don't know how many of these I'm going to be able to handle. So let me know if you're a Harry Potter fan. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, one kind of fun fact about me is that I was the commencement speaker at my university graduation. And I spoke to, I think, 5,000 people on the three biggest lessons that we can take from Harry Potter. <laughs> To graduates and like PhD people and parents and like all that crazy stuff and I stood up there the largest crowd I've ever spoken to and I was like these are the three key lessons that we can take from the Harry Potter series it was a huge hit as I'm sure you can know because people who graduated around when I did they were Harry Potter fans okay let me digress let me know in the comments if you're a Harry Potter fan maybe send a fun wizard emoji or something like that if you have any questions that come up during this live, don't be afraid to ask them. Let's begin. So I'm going to break down um, this training into kind of two sections. The first is going to be VA subcontracting and the second is going to be agencies. So when you are a virtual assistant, you're a freelance contractor, you work for yourself, um, ideally you find your clients not on Upwork, not on Freelancer, not on Indeed. Luckily you don't find your clients there. And so you are in direct communication with your clients. They work with you, they pay you, all that kind of stuff when you're a virtual assistant. So that's like your clients are your clients. You know, multiple clients, supplementary income, all that juicy jazz. So when you're a virtual assistant, you are a, a freelance remote contractor. So subcontracting, it's pretty self-explanatory. So that is when a VA has jobs, projects, tasks, and they hire another VA to do it for them. Um, normally there's a couple reasons why this happens. One VA, uh, the first VA might be overwhelmed at a certain period of time. Maybe they've got multiple clients going through like book launches or something and they, they don't necessarily want to drop a client. It's just like bad timing and they've got more work than they can handle. So then they subcontract a VA to come help them. Another um, example when this would happen is if a VA lacks certain skills um, that they think could be better used by someone else. So for example, me, 
I'm not very design savvy. I just don't have a natural eye for design. So if I was given design tasks, um, it may be something I consider to subcontract those tasks to someone who's going to be faster, more efficient than me and create a better product. So that's what subcontracting means. It means a VA brings in another VA to handle their tasks. Now, the subcontracting VA does not speak to the client, okay? So this VA is still the, the direct communication to the client. They're just asking you to help out and take some tasks off of their plate. So this VA is not communicating with the client. They are not communicating with the client. Um, and because there's layers on how much everyone's getting paid, the subcontractor will normally get paid less so that this VA can still make money, if that makes sense. So they might, you know, take a bit of a bit of their rate off and hand it to you. If it's a well weathered VA and their rates are naturally higher because they have more experience and you're a newbie VA and your rates are lower as you wait for experience, then, you know, that might be, they might end up paying you your full rate because they're still getting paid theirs. Does that make sense? So if your rates are, are different, if the, if the subcontracting VA's rates are higher than the subcontract hmm T's anyway this person's rate is higher than this person's rate then this person still might get paid their full rate at that time because this VA is still um, making money so those are sort of the two big keys is that the subcontractor Anyway, I don't know which one they're called, subcontractor or subcontractee or whatever. The VA that's doing subcontracting work does not communicate with the client um, and might see a cut from their pay. It also might not be a consistent amount of work. It might just need, be like you're subbing in, you're spotting in, you're helping out when things get crazy. Um, the benefit of, the, of being a subcontracting VA is that you're getting some experience and the VA you're subcontracting under can act as a bit of a mentor too, right? So you're not necessarily getting thrown out into the world working with your first client all by yourself. You're working under a VA and you might find that really, really helpful. They're, you have your, they're guiding you. There's some mentorship. Um, they're, the project proofing goes through them before it gets to the client, so it's lower risk for you. And also there's referrals. So the VA that, that hired you to subcontract underneath them might really love you, love your work, um, and decide that maybe they're totally okay handing a client to you, or if their roster's full and a client approaches them, you might be the first person that they think of um, referring the client to. So that's what it's like, and there's pros and cons. The cons being that you're not in direct relationship with the client. It's not fully your client, your relationship. Um, you might see a cut in your in your rates. The pros are that it's a bit of a mentorship. Um, if you know you're not ready to dive straight in, and there might be some referrals that come out of it. So that's subcontracting. I hope that makes sense to you. It's it's self-explanatory in its in its name, subcontracting. But that's what it looks like for virtual assistants. Cool. Give me a thumbs up if that made sense to you. I need another sip of this. That was like a lot of chatting. My blue blogger glasses just uh, fogged up. I've got mixed feelings about this cocktail. <laughs> okay. VA agencies. Holy, I'm getting really whited out here. Come on. There we go. VA agencies. So these are much more like... Um, they're not subcontractors in that it's one VA subcontracting under another. The agencies normally have um, v teams of VAs in the agency and then there's agents that are like sending you off. So, 
So a client might go to a VA agency um, and say, you know, this, these are the kind of projects that I have. Um, do you have any VAs that can help me with that? So they're kind of like platforms like Freelancer Indeed um, and Upwork. They're kind of like that, except that they're like a single entity and it's much more like human controlled. So agencies are when agents are going to assign you your clients um, and they will absolutely take a cut. They have to make a profit in order to stay around. How agents make money is they have lots of VAs that are in their agency and they take a little cut from every single one. So you are going to see a cut in your rates potentially um, and you have less say over um, who your clients are going to be, the projects that you work on. You're, you're much more tied to the agency. Um, you know, it's dependent on whether they have clients coming to them or they're finding clients. Think of it like actors with their agents. You know, the actors, their agents help them get auditions for movies and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you're going to have your agencies... Um, agreements, contracts, all that kind of stuff. So the pros to working under an agency is if you are a V, if you are an aspiring VA that is like terrified to find clients and reach out to people and having a discovery call with a total stranger makes you not want to do this thing at all, then an agency might be a nice step for you because it sort of takes away that stranger interfacing, the struggle of finding clients, um, you know, they sort of find it for you. So there is some pros to that. If you are that kind of person, I really, really encourage all the VAs in the Laptop Freedom Program um, to find, to build the best business for them and the best fit. I'll definitely be there encouraging them to try to find their own clients first, give that a go. And then, you know, if I, if there's someone in the group that's maybe a lot shyer or keeps coming up against self-limiting beliefs or keeps like doing the skills training and not actually finding clients, then I might hop in and be like, have you considered an agency? Because it's, it's coming across to me like the whole finding clients and having discovery calls and reaching out to people makes you want to shit your pants. And so like, you're just not, and then like, where are we going with this? So an agent that might be a pro to an agency is kind of a lot of that equation is handled for you. Um, once you are working with a client in an agency, you don't get to branch off and like take them for yourself. You're still very much tied to that agency. So you lose that independence um, which, you know, depending on who you are, I'm big on independence and that's why I got into this, but maybe you're just like, I want to be stay at home mom. I've got chaos going around. Finding clients is like discouraging me or it's, you know, making me feel uncomfortable. Maybe an agency is something to consider. The pros to an age, wait, that was the pro. The cons to the agency I kind of covered is that like you zero independence. You have, you don't really get a say of who you work with. So you might end up working with a client who just like sucks um, or is a bad cultural fit or like your personalities clash. Like you don't get to have that discovery call where you both determine whether you want to move forward with this contract and relationship. So you definitely kind of lose that say. Um, part of your, part of the payment goes to the agency. So you do lose a chunk of what you could potentially be making if you take out that middleman. Um, and, but I believe you are in direct contact with the client. So unlike subcontracting where you just talk to the VA that subs, that is subcontract, uh, is hiring you as a subcontractor, I'm so struggling with that, whatever term that is. Um, I, and in an agency, you will be like assigned that client and it'll be like, okay, this is what you're doing, but it'll be a lot more cookie cutter. Um, yeah. So I hope that helped and answered those questions. I know there's, you know, VA agencies are out there when you Google VA agencies pop up. 
Um, and I know in the Facebook groups, there's lots of job opportunities for subcontracting. And so these questions come up like, what does that mean? What does that look like? They're just different ways of doing it. And so I really hope I made those pros and cons clear um, because it's about finding the best route for you. Um, and I don't want to necessarily come out here and say and be like, you know, screw agencies and screw subcontracting. I'm empowering all of you ladies to find your own clients and be your own bosses and you're independent, independent, independent. Yes, of course, that's what I want from for all of you because that's what I did. But not everyone is the same, right? And everyone's got different situations and different scenarios. And maybe agency and subcontracting gigs are good for you. I just want you to know the difference between all three so that you're making empowered decisions and you're not thinking, oh, I have to start in an agency or I have to start with contracting. You don't. You do not need to start with an agency. You do not need to start with subcontracting. You can, you can leave it, but you don't have to start there. And so it's really about tuning in and figuring out what's best for you um, and picking that route. Because I always say the only way to build a business is the way to build a business. And what I mean by that is like, as long as you build it and it works and it's best for you, then there is no right or wrong way. And that's the cool, crazy thing about business. So let me know if this resonated with you. Let me know if you're going to go make a Harry Potter themed apple cider ginger beer cocktail that Rebecca just kind of whipped up. It's super, it's good. It's good. But I'm going to go, I've got to make dinner and then I've got a Harry Potter movie to watch. So bye everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I always pop in.